first graders, our objective today is I can identify story elements in a fictional text. So uh, if you look at our objective, those are some words that we do already know. We know that identify means to tell what it is. Story elements are character, setting, problem, and solution. And fiction means fake. So we're going to look at a made-up story today. One of my favorites, Lily's Purple Plastic Purse. And we're going to be uh, drawing out our characters, setting, problem, and solution. And we're going to be answering some questions, multiple choice questions at the end of our reading to make sure we truly can tell, identify the story element. We are going to be communicators. We share our ideas. Communicate, communicate. I like to communicate. Listen, speak, and read, and write another language too. Communicate, communicate ideas from me to you. So the ways that we can communicate are by reading, writing, speaking, listening, and communicating with our bodies. Today, I'll communicate a story with you that the author is um, teaching us from, and then we know that those storytellers are able to share their ideas and their experiences through storytelling. You are going to write what the story elements are. That's how you're gonna communicate to me that you know what they are. Your job is to also communicate with your body. We're going to review the different motions we have for our story element so that you can also communicate with your body. All right, our central idea, what our learning is all about. Our central idea is we share our experiences through storytelling to build understanding. So we know that authors tell stories to share the experiences that they've had and to teach us things. So we are going to be learning about these stories so that we can also communicate through storytelling and share our ideas and be great communicators. All right, we are looking at how these stories are formed. Form, form, what is it like? We're going to talk about those four story elements that most fiction fake stories have that helps the authors to be able to have a structure or a form to use when sharing their stories so they can communicate well. All right, there are four story elements. Let's review what the ways that we can communicate with our bodies what they are. First one is characters. Characters are who or what? the story is about. So in some of the stories that we've already read, like The Invisible Boy, our story element characters were Brian and Justin. We've read lots of stories with lots of different characters, and they are who the story is about. Now our setting, remember our setting is when or where the story takes place. So we saw in the little red hen, the setting was out in the field and also in her kitchen. Remember, we don't say that a setting is outside or inside. That doesn't tell us very much information. We want to say where outside, like in a field, or where inside, like in a kitchen. All right, and now we have the problem. The problem is when something goes wrong. The problem is when something goes wrong. The things that have gone wrong in our stories are usually what the author is trying to teach us a lesson from, right? Remember in the little red hen, when no one wanted to help with the bread, they didn't help with the wheat, they didn't help harvest it, they didn't help cook, they didn't do anything. And that was a really big problem because the little red hen was stuck all alone. So that is the problem in our story, usually the most exciting part of our story. But our final story element is the solution. The solution is how we fix it. The solution is how we fix it. 
So in our story, this little red hen, she fixed her problem by saying, well, sorry, friends, you don't get to eat it. I will eat it by myself. And the author was able to teach us the story of how you need to help your friends and work hard or you don't get the reward and the fun part at the end. So our authors can help us build understanding through our problem and our solution. I'm really excited to learn about our story today. As you are listening to our story, Lily's Purple Plastic Purse, I want you to have this sheet out in front of you with a marker ready. As I read, I want you to be drawing the characters, the setting, the problem, and the solution. Today, I want to see what you can do on your own with drawing. And at the end of the story, I want you to take a moment to write your sentences. The characters are, hmm. Now, almost every day we do it together. Today, I want to see what you can do on your own. Don't forget a period at the end of your sentence. Make sure to go back and read your sentence and check for uh, <laughs> capital at the beginning and finger space in between your words. Do it as neatly as you can because there's going to be a Flipgrid video at the end of our Nearpod today. And you're going to get to show off your character setting, problem, and solution. I can't wait to see them. So click on the blue arrow so you can hear our story, Lily's Purple Plastic Purse.